around 1968, we, uh, it was a whole lot of us. It was hundreds of us, you know, at my mom's house uh, where we grew up. And it was so many of us that she just formed a club, you know, and the day that we picked the name, I said name it, uh, I think it was Kid Power. Poochie, he knew something. He says, no, name us Rolling Avenues. It was, a, it was a time back then um, when we had a love for each other. We had a certain love, you know, we had a connection. And we did fashion shows, we did uh, clubs, we did car washes to raise money, we did um, parades, we did the parade up and down Central. It was a fun time. My mom started the Rolling Avenues because she was an uh, activist in the community. When me and Poochie and Jay and Anthony, when we was growing up, and Danny, when we was growing up, we just wanted to have fun. We needed something to do. So I had a feeling for a drill team. And that's where the drill team part came in the Rolling Avenues. It already was there, but we wanted to step. And our colors was black and gold. And I mean, we had a ball. I remember one time we went to a um, parade and we used to wear Kroger sacks. And our shirts was black and had Rolling Avenues on the front and our name on the back, and we had our black uh, pants and our black Kroger sacks with taps on the bottom. So we formed a line, we, we got in formation, the three lines, and we tapped all the way from Slauson and Third Avenue all the way to Central, and I think it was in the 30s or something, because that's where our spot was to go down to Central to end at the park in the uh, parade, and we tapped. The villains came out, the VNGs came out. I mean, we tapped through every other gang that you can think of. Back then, we were the Rolling Avenues. And then it was a thing that existed in our neighborhood called the 60s. They weren't the Rolling 60s then. They were just 60s. Because you go back, way back when it had the Rick Ross controversy at that time, uh, back in the late 70s, at that same time, the eight trays in the 60s start beefing because of, I'm not going to say blast your name on camera, I'll just call her JT. You know, JT was going with a 60 and an eight tray at the same time. Well, they ran into each other at her house. And that's when everything changed. One, our homeboy was named Tyrone. And it was in the late 70s when he was murdered by a tray. At that point, it was time to put down the drums and pick up the guns. When the Rolling Avenues dispersed and the Rolling got put on the 60s, it was on. We were what you call uh, invincible. We used to get along with the Five Deuce, Hoovers, and the Broadway Gangsters. I don't know what happened between then because I actually moved over there. This is my son Antoine, and this is my son, this is my nephew Myron. Now, mind you, when I say I'm the baby out of 12, I have six nephews from my sisters, and four of them are gone. They, they died before they even got 19. See, this is Myron. Myron passed away, and I think that was 2002. Uh, and, 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 and then this is Antoine. He was actually murdered by a 60. My son was a five deuce Hoover. Okay. A 60 killed my son. I went to three funerals in one day. See, I remember when um, Jay Blake, Ken Bone, and a kid was murdered. Um, it was those funerals was all in one day. Monster Cody did an interview. And I'm going to try to hold it together right now. Monster Cody did an interview. And he said that he brought, he brought somebody's arm. He brought somebody's arm back to a meeting. And that was Jay Blake's arm. You mean to tell me that story is real? Yes, that was Jay Blake's arm.
It was real. He did bring an arm back. They chopped him up and put him in front of Jefferson High School. They couldn't even open his casket, sir. In that day, it was three funerals. When I seen that interview that he did, and, and he just like had no remorse, you know. A lot of people thought that when he wrote that in his book, he was exaggerating. No, it was true. It was true. Now, if we could have found a different avenue to channel that energy, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't be here talking to me. I wouldn't have no point to, you wouldn't have no point to be here, right? When that war started, and I call it the war of infinity, and that's what I call this war between the 60s and the 8 trades. It's the war of infinity because I don't see an end to it. You know, I've been on streetgangs.com and I've seen my little homeboys boasting and bragging about 60s and 60s that. But let me tell you, and I'm going to look directly into the camera at you. If you spent most of your energy that you spend boasting and bragging about the hood and go to school and get an education and find out how we can make businesses in our hood and that way we won't have to worry about other races coming in, building swap meets, building, you know, gas stations, other businesses. You see, you're under the, the, the curse of Cain. And I don't know if you guys read the scriptures, but if you read in Genesis 4, it talks about Cain. And there were certain curses put down on Cain. And one of them was that he would be a, a fugitive and a vagabond. And you look at the brothers out here. They running from the law. They running from themselves. They running from other people. They running from the girlfriends. That's a fugitive and a vagabond. They at every spot. One spot gets raided. They go to the next spot. These are the curses of Cain. And another one is that your land will not yield you any strength. These men wonder why they have no strength because you're out here killing your brother as a God sac as a blood sacrifice to who? To God. He doesn't want to partake in none of that. These are the curses of Cain. You know, there was, it's just a generational curse. And you think that why you're not, you're not yielding any strength in your, in your own neighborhood, you're protecting something that you'll never own. Our names were well known in the neighborhood, well known in this park. And we was the guys that was out front, basically, over just about everybody, even took it because they only came out yeah. on weekends. I joined the neighborhood gang and I was involved in gang fights. Matter of fact, our neighborhood was the first drive-by drive that happened.